when I thought about how to build this frame out, uh, it's such a sturdy frame. I thought, let's let's give it a good test and maybe consider building it out for a 5 or even a 6S build. Uh, I've got some of these 30 amp ZTW Flash BL Heli S ESCs here. They were sent by Quadrasteria. Thank you, Quadrasteria, for that. Uh, and they're only rated for 4S technically, but my understanding is that most ESCs today, uh, they're, they're built with like 35 volt components. And so they're good for the voltage, it's just the heat dissipation that limits them to the lower uh, S's, S's ratings. So uh, I'm going to give these a try. I think they should probably do fine on 5S and maybe even on 6S, I don't know. For motors, I'm going to be going with these Emacs RS2205 2300KV red bottom motors. And you're probably wondering, well, why did he pick those motors? And the answer is that um, I get those motors from ATs. Uh, it's hard to find a regular supplier of some of this stuff, and so that's why I appreciate ATs being a sponsor, because they can really fill in the gaps of when there's not some hot new product that somebody wants to send me. Uh, you know, you can't build a copter if you're missing some of the critical components. So I'm using these because I feel like they're such a solid, sturdy motor that it, should they be able to take 5S? I don't know. If you've run them on 5S and you burned them out and this is a horrible mistake, well, you can tell me about it. If I have to run the copter on 4S, it won't be the end of the world. For the flight controller, I'm going with the Furious FPV Combini, and it has an OSD and video transmitter board that stacks on top of it. And I'm going with this because this copter doesn't come with any built-in PDB, so the Combini with its built-in PDB seems like a good fit here. The Combini is actually pretty compact for this relatively roomy frame, and with all the extra space we've got in the frame, it would be really nice to use a 4-in-1 ESC. So you go 4-in-1 ESC, Combini, video transmitter, and OSD, and you'd have basically your entire copter electronics in one nice neat stack. An additional advantage of that would be that it would get the ESCs off of the arms. These are nice looking arms. They look a little cluttered up with the ESCs on them. And in fact, that slit cut out of the middle of the arms makes it a little bit hard to mount a normal ESC in a good looking and neat way. It's such a nice looking frame. It's kind of a shame to kludge it up that way. So if you are going to build this frame out, I would strongly advise using a 4-in-1 ESC in the center rather than putting the ESCs on the arms, if at all possible. If only for aesthetics, and that's really the only reason. But for now, this is what we're going to go with, normal ESCs and the Combini and the OSD stack. I still use the X4R SB as my receiver. You may wonder why I don't use the XSR, and it's because of these connectors here. Uh, the X4R has these UFL connectors, which allow you to just snap a new antenna on, and the XSR has solder on antennas, which means that I can usually, with an X4R, replace an antenna without even uh, taking the receiver out of the copter. And for camera, we're going to be using the Runcam Eagle, this time the 4.3 version. I reviewed the 16.9 version, and there were some issues with the image quality. And I think they may have to do with the lens that's used on the 16.9 one. So Runcam offered to send me the 4.3 version and see how it stacks up. And of course, I was very interested to report to you guys what the differences were. So that's what's going in this one. One of the issues I run into with these RS2205 motors is that it's really hard to know whether you're getting normal thread or reverse threaded motors. And the reason for that is that different vendors give the listing differently. Some vendors will give the motor direction, and some vendors will give the nut direction. And, of course, those two things are opposite. So when you order a counterclockwise motor, you actually don't 100% know what you're going to get unless you've ordered from that exact vendor before. The reason that I want normal threaded motors is, number one, I want to be able to run out to the hardware store and buy a replacement nut if I need to, right? I don't want to have to order some weird reverse threaded nylock nut that my local hardware store doesn't have, and they don't have it. Yours, If yours does, good for you. The other thing, though, is it's so freaking annoying to me when I go to, t to change the props to, like, not to be, to like, trying to take the prop off and I'm tightening the nut instead of loosening it because I didn't, I just want to, I just want my righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's been that way since I was a kid. It needs to stay that way. So I order all my motors with normal threaded uh, nuts and, and then everything just works fine. Uh, and you say, well, what about the fact that the uh, nut will work loose in flight? That's why we do it this way. That's why we have reverse threaded and normal threaded motor belts. And I say with nylocks, it doesn't happen. I've never had a nylock work, work loose in flight. Never. The only time a nylock will work loose is if you if the prop is bound up some way, like you've crashed in a tree and the prop is hitting a branch, and then you spin the motors to try to shake the copter out of the tree, and the prop uh, binds against the branch, and the motor works the nut loose. In that exact scenario, that is the one time 
when having a reverse threaded nut would tighten it down instead of loosening it up and you you would then what would happen you would just break the you would break the prop and then i don't know it's not worth it to me the hassle the the day-to-day hassle of having reverse threaded nuts in the mix so that's my opinion. I, I, I always order everything with standard threads, counterclockwise, except if the listing is wrong, then I accidentally ordered four cro- reverse threads. But hey, at least it's consistent. The worst for me is having two and two, and I have to like look and think and twist and feel if it's tightening or loosening and eh. So if you love doing it that way, more power to you. But ugh, no, I just order everything counterclockwise. That's what I say. So, okay, so then I showed you that the screws... The motors come with two sets of screws, a long set for four millimeter arms and a short set for three millimeter arms. And we're going to use the short set for the three millimeter arms because we have three millimeter arms. And that is important because if you use the long set on the three millimeter arms, the screw will touch the windings and will make a short circuit and will make fire come out sometimes. Bad things will happen. So... That is probably one of the most common mistakes that people make is they use screws that are too long. You really only need a couple millimeters coming out to hold the motor in place. Um, you don't need a ton of threads. And in fact, I, ha- I, don't even, I don't even Loctite mine. I know that some people feel like that's a sin, but I don't Loctite mine. And again, I've never had them come out. So maybe I've just been lucky. I'm being real. I should really set aside the long screws and make sure I haven't accidentally used them. Uh, Let me make sure, absolutely sure, I'm not accidentally using one of the long screws. I should get rid of them, or I should set them aside so I don't accidentally pick one up. And okay, yep. So I'm good to go here. These are all the same size, and they're all the short screws. These are. The long, it's a a short one, that's a long, those are long. I'm not going to throw those out. I always save them because I can always find uses for them. But, okay, now let's put the motor on. I just thought, wouldn't it be dumb if I had accidentally put one of the uh, long screws on and I smoked something? That would be a real shame. I also like that Emacs sends you extras. There's five in here of each of the sizes, and that's a really nice touch. There's also extra of the prop nuts as well. That's a really nice touch. It it, it costs them a few pennies more, but if if you drop a screw on the floor and you lose it in the carpet or something, it's a really nice touch. Those are the short ones. Double check. Yes, they're the short ones. Yeah, see, I tightened those down too soon. These don't line up. See, I shouldn't have tightened those down. I got ambitious. Trying Trying to be clever. Trying to be clever. Never try to be clever. Except sometimes you are clever and it works and that's awesome. But usually when you're trying to be clever, you're going to get yourself in trouble. That, see, that is a long one. Oh, sneaky bastards. How did that happen? Where did it come from? Oh. Now I have to pull all the other ones out and make sure I didn't accidentally put a long one in. Long one. Yes. So I sure as heck hope that I didn't damage the enamel in there. I'm going to do a visual inspection and see. Probably didn't. I probably didn't. Because, I don't know. I I mean, I'm going to hope I didn't. But that's exactly what I'm freaking talking about. Where did that come from? I don't know. Okay, well now I have... um, I finished installing the motors and I did this off camera. I uh, removed the wrapping and the motor wires from the four ESCs. And I've run into a little bit of a cork here with this frame. The specially designed arms, ooh, fancy uh, stress analysis, CAD, nah, whatever. Um, how are you going to mount an ESC exactly to it? I'm going to align 
clean it. Let's see. See, it doesn't got good contact there, but it kind of doesn't matter. I can, no, it's going to want to fall through. That's no good. Yeah, that's no good. What if I... Yeah, that's that's okay. That'll do. So I just moved it a little bit up that way so it sits, it's sort of covered all the way around and it's not falling through the crack in any way. I guess that's okay. That'll be all right. Much better. So that one's a little too long. It's really protruding. Protruding out. I'm going to shorten it up just a smidge. Oh, I shortened it a, just a smidge too much, I think. That's the problem with that approach. But I should be all right. That one's pretty long too, actually. Yeah, let's see if I can just take a take off a hair there. That's better. Well, in the end, I decided that uh, my so my signature of red electrical tape was not going to cut it because it doesn't go with the, the gold color scheme of this copter at all. Red and gold? No, that's not what we're going for here. Um, so what I decided to do was just uh, wrap them in this um, this fusing tape, this self-fusing tape. I think it's called splicing tape. Uh, and I'm mostly doing that because it's black. <laughs> and it's going to look nice. Um, actually, I actually don't like it for wrapping ESCs because when it is nicked by a prop, it splits. It splits and, and just tears. So electrical tape will take a little bit of a hit and just sort of nick and stay. But this stuff, as soon as it gets one hit, it just, uh, that's just kind of it for it. it. It doesn't come off immediately, but it's not as durable as I would really like it to be. So, what I'm doing is, I'm actually going to put a little bit of clear heat shrink on the outside to kind of add a little durability. And I know, that's so freaking redundant, but I just, the, with a flashy gold... I just kind of want this one to look nice, and I don't usually have that as a priority, but today I do. So, you know, we can all do something different. So we're going to put one of these little spacers on here, put it on the screw. And that's going to have two effects. Number one, it's going to act as a spacer, so the flight controller does not sit down in, in this little recess and touch the carbon and on top of that it's going to oh yeah that's just the right size on top of that it's going to hold these screws in while I'm working so they're not constantly falling out and oftentimes when I do a build like this I'll just put a nut a little nylon nut on uh, the screws as I put them in the in the bottom uh, plate just to hold them in 
a little bit of a clutter here. It's not easy for you to see what I'm doing, I'm afraid, but I'm not doing anything really rocket science here. Just putting these little M3 nylon spacers on these M3 uh, button head screws. Oh yeah, talk engineering to me. <laughs> okay, so the screws are in. I'm gonna get this nonsense out of the way. Nope, apparently I can't. Oh, there we go, there we go. So, the, so they're in, and then we'll take the Colmini, I'll just throw that anywhere. I think this is the front, yeah, because here's the camera plate cutouts. Okay, so yeah, that's the front. So this is going to face the front. And I do like to put the flight controller in place before I solder to it. Uh, and make sure all your wires are the right length, of course. And just holds it snugly. Now, you'll notice I'm having a little trouble getting it on here. And the reason for that is that I tightened the spacers all the way down, and the screws have absolutely no give. So you want to... You don't want to tighten those spacers all the way down like I did. Otherwise, if the board is cut to close tolerances, you won't have enough sort of weight. Now, see, now it's settled right down on there. Perfect. So now that it is on there and it is facing front, I'll go ahead and tighten these screws down. And I'll just put a little pressure on the board with my thumb to help hold the spacer from turning. Perfect. Yep, those are all snug as a bug. Great. Okay, so now that's in place, and it is time to start soldering to it. Very exciting. And I'm looking at the timeline and seeing that I'm about 17, almost 18 minutes into this video, so I think I have probably exhausted most of your attention spans. We're going to call this video a close, and I'll pick it up in part two. I think there'll be two parts to this series. Uh, you can watch me actually take a soldering iron to this flight controller. Man, it's a little nerve-wracking for my a person of my soldering skills. But I get it done, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.